Hello, I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. For this book talk, we're discussing the first book in the Black Company series, The Black Company. This is written by Glenn Cook. Now this, this is a more of a dark fantasy novel. It's more gritty. It is definitely fantasy. It's about uh, a company of soldiers who, whose history extends back centuries. It's all kept by the, the historian Croker. He's He's, he's not really an officer, but he's also not a regular soldier. He's kind of the middle ground. And because he's the historian, he can go and talk to anybody he wants to about anything he wants to. And everyone accepts that. because it, and, and these soldiers, are, it's like the French Foreign Legion. It's where they're brought in, they don't discuss your past, and a criminal, heartbroken, whatever it was that drew you to the company, that's your business. You'll usually take on another name like Croker, Elmo, One-Eye... Tam Tam or Tom Tom, I can't remember. Is a one eyes brother. You know, it's just it's just you you have a, a name for yourself. So that's it for the non spoilery. So from here forward, I will be sharing spoilers. If you haven't read the book, uh, go read it. If not, yeah, and you just want to hear what I have to say to decide if you want to read the book, please continue forward. There's no spoilers. All right, bye. All right, so this one starts with them being in barrel, which is. Uh, you know, which is a jewel or a gem, and actually it's part of the gem cities, which is kind of a neat. See, Glenn Cook, I like his writing style. I've also read his Garrett P.I. novels. I just like how he, he can focus on the character, but also entwine the entire story to keep you interested. So you have the characters that you can connect to, but you have the whole overriding story that just draws you in and does the world building, the magic systems, the people and populations he does a really good job putting that all together okay so this book starts with croker uh explaining what it's like to be in the barrel barrel city though one of the jewel cities and it sounds pretty awful and it's hot it's humid there's a fork of lava which from what i understand is a wear panther the people are dirty and they're restless and so they're always causing rebellions and uprisings <laughs> It just, it doesn't sound like a good time, but he meets, uh, he meets Soul Catcher when Soul Catcher comes to talk to the Black Company to hire them to work for the Lady in the North, and Soul Catcher seems like a really interesting character because Soul, uh, uh, Croker assumes it's a man, and he's not sure. It's a short size, but the uniform kind of has bumps that he thinks may be a lady, but he just he's gonna assume it's a man for his own peace of mind. But Soul Catcher can talk with different voices. I and mean, he'll sound like a man at one point, a woman, a child, an adult again. He'll sound refined and polished or low and guttural. It'll sound tweaky and that it, it just he he every time he talks, every sentence is a different voice. And that's kind of that's kinda of freaky, but also be pretty cool. You nobody would ever be able to figure out who you are. But they, they get hired, they head to the north, they start working for the lady, and they show themselves to be the only soldiers in the lady's uh, employ who actually get results. They actually start beating the rebels. They get with Raven, and Raven and Croker, you know, they, they keep going on those missions. They take out the Limper, who, uh, Limper just, he, he he's just seems like an awful awful man and the other i mean the other 10 who are taken are probably aren't good people because well i mean maybe they were good before they were taken it sounds like once they're taken they kind of turn evil or maybe amoral about what's going on around them but the limper seems just like at that extra bit of nastiness and viciousness and all and, and he's missing part of his face uh the hanged man is literally hanged and so his head's at a different angle and his face is all purple uh, the shapeshifter is nine feet tall. I mean, these, I, mean, I don't, I don't know if, if it's the magic of the world, but it just, it seems like the, the wizards and the sorcerers and the, and the witches and things, they look different. It, it changes them physically into something different. And the vitality, like almost nothing seems to kill them. I mean, the lipper is shot repeatedly with arrows. And he's just fine with it. He gets burned by flaming worms. Fine with it. He gets buried under a house. 
crawls his way out. I need these things, these wizards and the Taken and everyone, uh, the rebel circle, all just really strong, sturdy, vital individuals, and and that's all you can assume is from the magic. Uh, and and <laughs> two of my favorite characters are One Eye and Goblin, and that's mainly because they keep fighting each other, <laughs> and just. I, yeah, you have to have that all powerful take in there and the lady, but honestly, it's Goblin and One Eye that make me wish I had magic. So I could do stuff like what they're doing. <laughs> like, like, Goblin creates a race of miniature pygmies that all look like One Eye but have big red butts like baboons do. <laughs> Just to mess with each other. And it really is. Those two make me wish I had magic. Cause, and, and, a, and a friend who had magic could be willing to do just stupid little silly wars like that. <laughs> just for the heck of it. And then even at one point in the book, uh, the captain, the, the bear man, is sees that everybody's kind of getting stressed and worn out because they've been getting beat and retreated. And, and the, the circle and the rebels are really starting to enclose round about the ladies, ladies' tower. And so he, he manages to get Goblin and One-Eye next to each other just so that they can do that to make all the old hands laugh, make the new guys see that magic, yeah, can be awful and horrible, but it can also be something interesting and funny and help just uplift. It's not just has to be a dark, heavy presence. It can be uplifting and interesting and and worthwhile. So it, it's, I'm, I'm glad that Glenn Cook put that in there to show the... That, that dichotomy of the Taken who are just so powerful that they literally cause lava, that they rain, cause a storm that lasts for weeks, that they they blow holes in the ground, make poison clouds, and then Goblin and One-Eye who do a lot of interesting things, but also have a lighter side to them. I like that. I'm really glad Glenn Cook, Cook put that in there. He's good at, he's good at putting in that humor. That may seem like it's it's dark, but it's actually, if you really look at it, it has a lightness to it to help uplift the book because the rest of it is pretty bad. <laughs> Croker is a good character, or well, an interesting character. I like him. I don't know if he's a good man precisely because he is the Black Company after all, and that's all villains and outlaws and generally not nice people. <laughs> but they're all his brothers, his family, as they, they put it. Darling, and in the end of the book, it's Ro uh, Croker and Silent who go after Raven and Darling when they run away because everyone's figured out that they're the White Rose. She's the one destined to take down the Lady and the Ten who are taken in the final battle when the Comet comes again. And that's kind of the end of the book. And they meet up. They they say, Raven, you shouldn't have just left. We're your family. You should have said bye to us. Goodbye, Darling. Uh, they each give her a little present to like a little doll and a carving just to help her center away because she's such a sweet little girl in the book. And then the book ends. Croker, they're still working for the lady. They are still a part of the company because that's, Croker can't be anything else, neither can Silent. They're, they're black company. And it was, it was, it was, it was a dark book, but at the same time it had it light moments. And Glenn Cook is just an excellent writer. I, I, I do, I, I've liked everything of his I've read so far. But that's it. That's the end of the, the book talk. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. Talk to you later.